over that way is where I'm going to head in a moment as well as checking out the car park with all the different specifications of the G500s and G63s but before we get there just have a little look at this Mercedes-Benz Classic have brought out a lineup of different G-Wagons through the ages some fairly special ones but what's quite interesting about the early cars is how distinctly familiar they still are let's head though over to the car park and have a look at some of the different colors you can have for the new models inside the exhibition here we have an example of the new ladder frame that is used in the car quite literally if you look at the way the steel chassis is shaped here you have the ladder rungs going through it but this is exactly why by having the gearbox mounted above by having all the components right above that you get so much ground clearance underneath i always love seeing the stripped out underpinnings that create a car up close like this and an experience you don't normally get to see afterwards half of it perfectly clean the other half fresh from being driven on the off-road tracks around here these definitely mean business as you can see that car going up over the rocks there but we are surrounded by g-classes of all varieties and colors and specs as i said mine is actually parked on the very end there but here next to one another we have a g63 and a g500 so you can see the main differences from the front the amg has the panamericana front grille and a more aggressive lower bumper whereas the g500 has the more traditional mercedes-benz grille and a smoother more relaxed design we could say as well also smaller wheels it just has a v8 badge on the side as opposed to the v8 by turbo this car makes 422 horsepower still plenty but quite significantly less than the 585 of the 63 so the one i'm pointing at is brilliant blue a color you can get across the mercedes range really really smart especially in the low sun we have right now white is perhaps going to be a more traditional color for the cars. I think a lot of them will be ordered in white and black. We have the dark green also over here which is quite interesting just to come and have a quick look at that one. And G500 as well almost an olive green I'm not sure of the exact color name and the blue catching more sun on it. Edition one on the white again with the red pinstripes and the AMG style stickers down the side of the car. Hyacinth red I like this color as well a lot. It's just got very windy here my apologies for that in the afternoon but Let's go find one of these G500s and jump in. Here we go then, just swapped over, so it's my turn to drive. I'm with Wolfgang, who's Hello. the man in charge right now. What are we doing? We will drive downhill so that you will never forget it. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So, into drive. We have the center diff lock on and the rear diff lock. We're in low range, because obviously that's a big part of this car. This is some pretty gnarly ground here. My first sensation of this then is even just going downhill. <laughs> it's not taking any particular skill to do so, right? The car is... Oh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, right, so, so far, I mean, yeah. it's riding over this terrain. You see the cone? Yeah. Take a right. Okay. And I will bring you into the manual mode. Okay, so manual. And it's in second gear at the moment. And then do a sharp left. Sharp left. And, and We're can, going down there. And, and you can see this ugly surface. Yeah. But you will drive it down. And which way keep, do we go at the bottom? Keep a little bit right. And then, yeah, keep it. No. First gear, second gear? It's it's the first gear is in. Now it's in first. It was in second. Ah, it was in second. First. And we're going down to the right. We will continue to the right. And oh my now, good lord. Now we will make a stop because <laughs> you are thinking, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. But you can see more, th <laughs> more than 10 centimeters of clearance are yeah. still over. That's absolutely crazy. This is ridiculous. Sharp right. Sharp right. Sharp right. And here. then aim alongside the bushes. Okay, so. Sharp right. Full and lock. Keep some power. Keep, keep, yeah. Yeah, this keep is good. constant moving. Keep constant moving. Can't see anything. Right, keep it right and move. Keep it right and move. Oh, no, keep it right. Yep. Moving left, left, left. No left, way did we left, just get up there. Left, yep, perfect. Done. No way. Okay, so we're going to. However, you driving. Cross over this terrain. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you've got to go for the most aggressive part, which is right here. Yeah. Goodness me, it's so smooth in the way it does it. Downhill. Keep the steering downhill. That's all. But let the car do the rest. I'm not touching the brake. The car's doing it all with low range. 
Wow. The angle of approach at the front just lets you do that. 31. Just holding it in manual, down we go. Goodness me. <laughs> it would be hard to walk down here. <laughs> okay, we're stopped at 40% incline. Yeah, and now <laughs> please continue. With all the diff locks engaged. <laughs> Not even any slip, just straight away up we go. Yeah. A bit of water up ahead. Yeah, and now you have to decide, reverse or driving through. Of course we drive through. <laughs> Let's so, see. Yes, I will. Center diff lock. I would su suggest. Center diff lock and rear diff and lock. So 10 to 12 kilometers, it's okay. Now you feel the Good mass of the water. Give the throttle. Yeah, you feel completely yeah. the mass of the water. And now stop. Stopping. That's definitely above the door. What line. can you hear? The exhaust. Ah, the exhaust is bubbling the water. Yeah. From the heat. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's, I feel like my feet are below the waterline. <laughs> yeah. So I know it can go 70 centimeters of wading depth. Yeah. With ease. Ah. And we're out. Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much. Welcome. Awesome experience. Appreciate Welcome. it a lot. That was very cool then. If you come to the car here, you can actually see the wading depth on the side of the car, literally that deep into that stream of water. Incredible, incredible experience. Anyway, let's go find a G63 now for a different style of off-roading. We have uh, three different modes more for driving on off-road. That means if you activate the center differential mm -hmm. lock for hard off-road or so, then we have three different uh, settings more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the best is the trail setting. Uh, okay. It's for se a setting like a road, uh, which we have here in front of us. I love the click when the doors lock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't change it. <laughs> no, it's perfect. Yeah. Never change something that's perfect. Yeah. You can do it. Uh, you can do it a little bit faster. It's absolutely no problem. More fluidly. Just, just don't jump. No problem. It's no problem. You don't have to break here. Just go. Really? Yeah. yeah just go. Okay. It's a G. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't it's scared. a G. That if seems are, to be the if phrase. You are, if you are too fast, then I will tell you. Yeah. But if okay. I say nothing, it's absolutely no problem. I will switch from the trail mode to the rock mode. Okay. Not that we need it, but just to see the difference. Okay. You can continue. You feel the suspension is harder now. Yeah, the it's suspension is harder, suspension. the response is less. The response is, is, is less on the beginning. You feel it good on the beginning, the response is less. But if you push harder, then the maximum yeah. more power comes abruptly. Okay, yeah, because, I get that. Because it's, 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 it's for rocks. And like in the US, and so sometimes they have these huge rocks where have, they have to climb up and climb up and so yeah. And if they come to the rocks, they need the, the power from the engine very smooth and soft. And then, if you want to go up, yeah, they, then you they, need they, all they the power immediately. All the power, yeah, okay. yeah. and so the, the setting is special made for that one. Yeah, the okay. steering is a bit stiffer, and so on. And just that you can compare it if you go to the sand mode. Of course, we don't yeah, have now, sand here, but now, now you feel the steering. It's not so directly; it's more indirect. Yeah, same with the, the throttle. Yeah. Same with the front. It's a bit softer. Yeah, and the suspension is softer, but not as soft as for the trail mode. Okay. So, uh, just before. But I prefer we go to the trail mode. Mm -hmm. This is perfect for that conditions. Yeah. 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 And what's the amazing part, especially for me, it's completely the same car which you used on the road. The same on car that drove that dynamic on the road. Then the dynamic here on the tarmac, and you also can do that with the same car. And this this huge wrench. At first, we go in a comfort mode. Yeah. Did you see yeah. how it is in a, with the soft uh, steering, soft suspension, how it drags? Okay. And then later on, we change it. Yeah. Here, you can go to the left. So, in the comfort mode, you definitely feel it floating yeah, around quite yeah. a lot. You can go from the, the comfort mode to the Sport Plus mode. <laughs> sport Plus yeah, here. Sport Plus. You hear it, you feel it on the steering. Yeah. Suspension is hard and the response is more directly. Yeah, on the but it's a little yeah, bit yeah. firm. <laughs> it's a tight one. The right control is a yeah. bit aggressive. And then the next uh, tight corner is coming. The next tight. And now it comes a fluid part here. 
Ruined the bad. So the small plus was my favorite mode on yeah, the ride. Yeah, I believe you, I believe it. It's but an it's easy ride, in. you don't have to break it. Easy ride over the crest. Just okay. Go on. Yeah. And here you have to break. It's a mid fast left hander. So even in sport plus yeah. on this kind of terrain, it's not that bad. Stay on the inside. There's no grip. So take care, it gets, it gets tight here. set up that I enjoyed so much on the road. Oh, yeah. Same setting Same on a trail. Yeah. I'm lurking in the shadows then after a lot of time today out in the sunshine, but what an incredible experience. Driving in the G63 there in the same configuration on dirty and rocky trails that I was driving earlier on a smooth paved tarmac mountain road. It can be incredibly dynamic at one end of the spectrum, but effortlessly cross terrain like that at the other. I'm still trying to work out how that is actually possible, but it has blown my mind what this car can actually do. As they say, it's a G and there goes my neighbor car right now, literally. I, I don't know. Anyway, awesome thing. We're gonna have a look now at the interior in more detail. I'll get to the front and run you through the screens in a second, but to get us started, let's head around to the rear and talk a bit more about the boot and the back of the car and then the space for the rear passengers. So as you know, as I've said, love that click and that feeling, but basically because it's a big box shape, you have a lot of practicality. There is an optional, uh, shelf there over the top of the back and there's also a floor to stop luggage sliding around but you can imagine you can fit a lot of stuff back here it's so another one just gets set to move on out there the rear seats 40 60 folding with a through load as well so you've got lots and lots of room if you need it back here and i particularly like how the rear door has the red diamond stitching on the leather panel there i think that's a really nice touch i mean basically this is a five door oh there goes g500 convertible previous generation um five door car in effect we come around spare wheel housed inside the uh, black and silver dual tone painted covering back here similar finish to the front really you know from the carbon trim to the illuminated amg door sills and floor mat the lovely materials used for the seats as well and if i take a step inside oh you even have the round air conditioning vents back there there is no shortage of space i mean lots of room up there front seats in my position and there's plenty of room in the back too and i'm slouched down in the seats to be honest so more than enough room back here you've got air conditioning vents as well and i particularly like just the fact that you have the red seat belts to match with the materials used on the seat themselves perforation and you even have heated seats in the back as well which is just a nice touch i think everything is finished so well so i'm a big fan of that anyway close up the back jump into the front where we can start going through everything. Maybe even before I step in, door window controls and the mirrors as well. Beneath that, the heated and ventilated seats, lock, unlock, your memory positions for the seat controls. I like them being on the door. It just gives you easy ability to know what exactly you're moving and where it's going. Same kind of trim as we've seen in the rear of the car. Small step up to get in over the AMG side still, still but it's not difficult or unpleasant to do that and to make that move into the car. Let's kick it into life just quickly. bubbles fire up so we can start taking a more detailed look around here at what we've got so the positional positionable air vents rotate them to turn them on and off very nice down beneath that we've got our lights controls we've got the electronic handbrake switch we've got our lane assist turn off the parking beepers a couple more options i suppose you could have now the car does actually have stop start so in comfort mode for sure it will run it will also do cylinder deactivation if you're driving in comfort mode so cut uh, four of the eight cylinders for fuel economy reasons which is a nice little thing that it's able to do obviously the ginormous 12.3 inch digital displays that work together you control the main driver screen from the left side and you control the central screen from the right side which is nice using these touch pads to go through the different modes depending what exactly you're doing and where you want to have the car um, going through and then the left one you can move from the left side to the right side and go up and down through different um, modes, G sensors, whatever you want to have up really. Loads of information that you can show on those screens. You also have all your cruise control, your adaptive radar cruise control settings, and then you have all your phone settings and audio on the right hand side. And then it's just got a nice flat bottom as well to finish that off. Coming around here, the engine start stop button next to the automatic stop, or sorry, the stop of the automatic start stop if you would prefer. Then in the middle, these are your diff locks. So if you engage, 
the first diff lock mode, this is where it brings up these extra modes that I referred to earlier, trail, sand and rock. The centre diff lock locks both the front and rear axle to each other, obviously gives you one degree uh, of additional control and stability. If you lock the rear, that locks the rear left to the rear right. And if you lock the front, that locks the front left to the front right. Orange means they're on standby, red means they're fixed. So this is all pretty easy to control and operate, to be honest, depending how you want to have it. When you've got the diff locks active, you don't have ESP or traction control, but then you go back to completely standard. Um, it will unlock that and you then toggle through your modes using the dynamic selector down here, which you can see there, just going through different settings slippery being the very basic super easy to control and actually handle and manage when you start knowing what you're doing then you have the toggle for manual gearbox to retain it on the paddles so that it doesn't automatically go back into automatic your different your three different variable stages of the AMG ride control suspension traction control on or off on the right side is the button for putting it into low range or high range bringing up your parking cameras as well nice thing 360 surround cameras so we can just scroll through these you can look up the front camera if you want to see over a crest that you're driving up to you can look out the sides that's quite nice actually you can look straight back all sorts of different settings and you can see even there we've got the towing bar at the back if you wanted to pull a trailer with a car on board very easy to do active parking assist the car will park itself naturally don't they all these days <laughs> um, and then above that the exhaust mode adjustable uh, exhaust louder quieter and your volume then here are your controls and your ability to write on the uh, pad in the center if you want to input um, anything to the car so if we actually go back to home just quickly to see some more of what we have in here and we go to vehicle this is quite interesting we can go down to dynamic select and in dynamic select you can see a lot more information about the mode that you are in so individual mode you can customize and set up exactly how you'd like it not sure how you'd want it in this car but that's uh, to be enjoyed and played with engine data is always a little bit of fun it will show you some charts of what's going on for example as you can see there, that crackle is awesome fun. And then vehicle data, just so when you're on the move, you can bring up G sensors and you know your angles, uh, what the diff is doing or how it's set up. And finally, you have dynamic data. And here, I believe if you change through your modes, you will get slightly different displays. If we go um, back to comfort for a second, uh, we can see some things there. Actually, maybe if we go into vehicle data itself, in here when we lock the diffs and go into trail mode there you get some information about what how that's set up and you can see actually it's a completely different display when you're in that mode so if we now go through sand you can hear the revs go up so you've got more instant torque available when you're in the mode it just changes the different displays uh, and what's available to you so that is actually all pretty clever i like the levels of control that you've got and we haven't obviously gone through the usual things so to speak the navigation the media controls telephone in-car office um, the mercedes connect mercedes me connect which lets you see where your car is check if it's locked we've got apple carplay and android auto which are nice touches as well lots of apps you can download your phone can tell you the car's fuel status if it needs a service and then you've got a ton of settings for things like there's touch inputs, your lighting, the car has 64 different light colored lights that you can have around. You can configure the displays and change the design style so you can go from sport, classic and progressive. If I just change it now, you can see classic there coming up with the dual display. I like how that could be a rev counter or in this case it could also be the navigation screen and then progressive as well um, there. But clearly they had it prepared for us today in the sport mode so if we revert back to that get a more sporty rev counter then on this screen if we go back home you can see how it is the complete digital interface AMG performance screens is where we are with the lap timer boost pressure gauge g-force sensor your uh, dynamic settings that's actually all really quite cool isn't it and then you can bring up normal trip navigation basically everything you you'd see the point very quickly here and the same on the right side you can change what the right side is showing as well access to so much information you wouldn't believe it all works super smoothly then over to the passenger side the grab handle with the carbon fiber inlay that we talked about earlier smallish glove box to be honest but then over here exact same controls that you have over on the driver's side too for your seat movements the headrests have quite a nice um, finish to them with that quilted almost leather that they have in the middle generally the leather this is quite an expensive option if you don't get it as part of the edition one package to, to opt for to have this luxurious finish to the interior but for me 
it all works very, very nicely. To be honest, it's lovely. It's the interior that you see and we're a little bit familiar with from the S-Class and, and the like. And it sounds like that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Right, let's switch that off. Back to some peace and quiet for the second step back out. So, there we have it. The Mercedes AMG G63. What a drive today has been. I didn't really know how I was going to feel about the car. I was a little bit worried my previous impressions of the previous generation might be resumed almost, but I have been completely surprised and taken aback in a very good way and pleasantly surprised at how capable this car is, how it can be dynamic, it can be so capable when you go to an off-road course, it's luxurious on the interior, it just has a bit of wind noise and it costs a lot of money. That's the only considerations. No doubt they're going to be hugely popular in the dunes of Dubai and Abu Dhabi, around central London, around Monaco and around cities in Germany, and you can see why. Wouldn't it be a cool car to tow another car on a trailer behind? I'm going to look into this a little bit more. Anyway, I have had the most incredible day. A big thanks to Mercedes AMG for the opportunity to come and drive the G63 today. For the instructors who took me out earlier, Wolfgang and Peter, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, getting to know an awful lot more about this car, but that hopefully won't be the last we see with it. I'd love to do some more with the new G63 in the future. Anyway, that is it for now. Thank you very much, as always, for watching, guys. I appreciate your support, and I will see you again very, very soon.